The following program is presented by its producer, host, and sponsors. I remember the day you were listening to Christian Varley on the one, the only Ralph Romeo radio program. And we are live tonight. And I saw the the Empire State Building tonight glowing red. It was the most beautiful sight. The Super Bowl is over. And here is Ralph Romeo live via satellite from... Where were you? Are you, are you in San Francisco right now? What's going on, buddy? Yeah, no, I'm in... Um... I'm in Tahiti. You're in Tahiti. I knew it. I knew it. There is so much to talk about tonight. There, it, it is. It is ridiculous. And the name that I'm going to put out, I'm not. You know, I got to say it. It's Peyton Manning. I was going to say Cam Newton because we we had a lot to talk about tonight. And I'm not a sports guy, but I actually watched the Super Bowl for the first time. I've only watched about five Super Bowls in my life, believe it or not. And this one, I watched almost in its entirety, and I watched it on a computer, which basically is the same thing as a TV screen, but I have Netflix now. I don't even have, like, I have a regular TV, but I don't have regular TV shows, you know, like CBS, ABC, Fox, and all that stuff. So I got onto the Internet, and I looked it up, and, um, and, and it came through, thank God. Thank you, CBS. What are you waiting for? Well, you know, it goes down now to say that Peyton Manning and the Broncos are winners. I know this has all been all over the news, but I just wanted to talk about foundations. What is your foundation? It's such an important thing. I've been thinking, I'm going to talk a little bit in the show about that, too, and I'm sure Ralph will have a few things to say about that, too. But, you know, from a biblical standpoint, I think about people, don't let every day rock you. We're living in the world of Facebook and stuff like that, which is, every, that that type of media is, everything is about being liked. In this world, we all want to be liked. Don't switch from day to day what you are. Try to find to be something good, something that God's made you. And we're getting back to our conversation right now with Ralph Romy. I was talking before about... Uh, the uh, I saw the Empire State Building on the way down. It just had such a beautiful, majestic look, and it was glowing in red with a beautiful winter uh, mist on it. It was just so gorgeous. Well, you know something? I'm not a great Eli, not Eli, uh, Peyton Manning Peyton. fan, but I'm a less of a, um, a Cam Newton fan. So I'm kind of glad what happened in the, uh, with, with the Denver Broncos. Well, I, I, here's the thing, I, and I have a ton to say about it, too, and I'm not usually a, a sports crazed guy, but... I, I, the defense, it was all about them because it's never about them. They never get their fair shake. And it reminded me of the 1986 New York Giants, who Phil Simms was, I, I like Phil Simms a lot, but he, he was a pretty good quarterback, but he had such a ferocious team. And that's just what happened. And they went and I was talking to our great engineer, Bobby Ryan, before I walked in. And thank you, Bobby Ryan, by the way, for uh, being a great guy there for us, for this show. I, I, I was saying that, um, the defense, I went in saying, okay, uh, the Panthers, I don't want to get my hopes up because I'm a big Broncos fan. I always liked John Elway, and I was very happy when John Elway years ago won the Super Bowl in 98, and then he won, the, he won it twice. But those were like the only Super Bowls I watched, and I watched the two with the Giants where they also won the 1986 Giants, and when the Giants beat um, New England, uh, beat Brady. And I, I'm a big Brady fan now. I love Brady. I think I'm actually like, I think he's a distant cousin of ours, but... I was out in California. I had just gotten out <laughs> to really? California, and they were saying bad things about Eli Manning. And, and I was out there, and all these people were rooting for New England, all these L.A. people. And I was out at Universal Studios, and it was up on a big screen. And I had just gotten to L.A. from New York, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Eli Manning turned around, and the Giants, uh, whatever year that was, beat the unbeatable uh, New England Patriots and Tom Brady at the time. Are these friends of yours? I'm telling you, telling you how much you, you you adore women and you would never, never think of doing anything like that with Tom Brady, right? Yeah, well, you know, they, they had to go there. And, and, and I understand that, you know, I'm an actor, so I get accused of that a lot of times. Uh, but uh, but no, I'm very straight. 13 minutes for you to mention <laughs> the word actor. Not bad, not bad. So who's there? What's happening? Hi, this is Tom Brady. Uh, <laughs> what's happening, Tom? <laughs> Who's this, Mike? Uh, hold on, hold on. Giselle, give me a minute. Go Giselle, ahead. give him a minute. Give him a minute, Giselle. Who's <laughs> who's there? You got exactly what's a up? minute. Thinking maybe we can get together. I'll let you wear my football pants around. We'll see how that goes. Uh, you yeah, that, that sounds great. You know, I, yeah, I always want to wear tights. That's that's great. I love it. By the way, your wife is it true that she wears the pants? She does. She does. <laughs> football pants in the family. She does. Yeah, does she get you? Does she get you to quaff your hair the way you have it? Everything's with her. She makes everything the way it is. So I what? Wear a skirt at the house. Awesome. Who's on top when you're having sex? Oh, she is. Yep. <laughs> How did I know that? Good man. You you working things out there? Did you get a chance to watch the silly game? By the way. 
I didn't. I didn't. I was too busy, but um, he oh. booed me at the stadium, and I left. <laughs> So, you, know, you know, you know. Hey, Tom, do you know that uh, either America loves you or they hate you? There's no, there's no in between. Isn't it great though? They, no, no ambiguity. Okay. Just, just they love you or hate you. Nothing in between. Isn't that, isn't that wonderful? I'm married to a supermodel. Y you are indeed. Hey, by the way, audience out there, we are talking to the one, the only Tom Brady on the other line. That's right. Tom Brady, uh, not not necessarily the quarterback, but we are talking to a Tom Brady. Uh, oh yeah, it's Tom. Only a question that that the real Tom Brady would truly know. How many how many plugs did it take to get you to the top of your head that way? Thirty-seven. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, you, you you just passed the test. Very good. That's right. We are having a conversation with the one and the only Tom Brady. Stay with us, everybody. We'll live our lives out loud. We were talking to not necessarily the football Tom Brady, but we were talking to a Tom Brady. They all were pra singing the praises of Lady Gaga, and that's nice and everything. And part of what made Lady Gaga famous is her eccentricness, you know, her coming out in these wild outfits. On social media, we're, we're living in that world, like it or not, and everybody that's maybe a little bit smart, they don't have to participate, but it, it's, it's the way the world is. It's like picking up a phone or a TV. It, it's reality. Um, they were very quick to go right after uh, Beyonce, and not even about the thing you brought up about the, the wardrobe. Um, they went after her because she had a tiny little slip. I thought their dancing was spectacular, okay? Now, I went right after them, and there was a bunch of, like, I, I'll use right-wing nuts out there, and they're not all right-wing nuts, just a bunch of, like, angry guys that are, like, angry or something at Beyonce. I, I'm not a big fan of her, of her music, but I watched their whole act out there, including Coldplay, who opened up, and it was a, a white band, whatever, in, British band, and I thought they were fantastic. But everybody was harping all over them and saying, oh, they got out there, and she almost stumbled. I, and I said to everybody right away, why don't you try to get out there? and dance for 20 minutes and sing. And about their outfits, I didn't notice any of that. And I don't, I don't listen to what other people say. Now, you know I respect your opinion, of course. But I don't, I don't listen to what other people say, say. I look myself and judge myself. And I watched it, and I actually enjoyed the halftime show. And um, Bruno Mars was dancing. And i got to tell you something. I thought he was fantastic. You know, you mentioned to me when you texted me, during the game, which again I didn't watch, but I got, but you did text me, and you we did we texted a little bit, yeah, yeah, and you said, and you said how um, the the game was, you know, the the commercials were carefully placed, and there oh, was yeah. a little bit of game, and maybe four, you know, oh, and, uh, a uh, four ton of minutes commercials. commercial, a little bit of game, and they have all the commercial timeouts. Uh, the, the last the last football game is actually the AFC NFC championship. The Super Bowl is a spectacle, Chris. Well, we're getting it, to the best part. It was funny, our different take on the halftime game. And it's funny because you see that the, one of the great things about Ralph and I, who's like my best friend, I love Ralph, is we don't agree on everything. We're not sitting there. Uh, I can't even think of the, the other host. No, let me mention it because no. I just mentioned it before we got on yeah, the air. Yeah. You know, I was listening to Red Eye Radio before uh -huh. we got on the air. Here, here's two guys on the air who speak for one another. Now, in this sense, folks, they, they talk, they say, well, we don't believe in that. <laughs> yeah, I hate well, that. we think that we that, that it should be uh, that away. And uh, we think it should be this away. And I say to myself, how, does two, how do two guys on the, on the radio, uh, they're, they're like Siamese twins. They have, what do they have, one brain between them? They're, they're kind of, they, they don't, they never disagree. They talk in unison. They, they, uh, if, if, if a caller is, it gets on one of their nerves, it, they automatically oust the guy because it, they both agree all the time. It's pathetic. It's so here we have two guys here. Chris and uh, Ralphie Boy, who uh, love each other as best friends, but uh, we can disagree. And that's what radio is supposed to be all about. Newsflash, Red Eye Radio. That's what radio is supposed to be all about. And, you know, the same thing with the callers, Chris. I think you know, the we... Caller, the call, when they call and they disagree and they're, and they're civil about it, even if they even if they get a little rowdy, I don't, I don't mind. It's, 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 it's fun. That's what radio is supposed to be. Go ahead. Because we're having a wild one here. With, of course, Ralph, Romeo. Uh, WPAT, you're on the line. Hello? Hello, who's there? Hi, good morning. Who's well, this? I'm, this is my first time in the air. Speak, speak up a little bit. Speak up a little bit. This is my first time in the air. But I love you, you. You're a virgin. 
Excellent. Just yell into the phone, buddy, so we can hear you. It sounds great. What's yeah, up? Speak up a little bit, a little bit, a little bit louder. All right, all right. I say this is my first time in the air, but I love your program. My name is Junior Gerardino. Keep your program well. God bless you. Thank you, Junior. Okay, what's what's your name? I'm Junior Gerardino. Well, do you have anything? Do you have anything to say? Well, I would like to say, uh, well. Can I say something about politics? Absolutely. Okay. Don't say that. No, go ahead. Why? <laughs> why? There's no judgment and no discrimination, but the reality is this. How come America, it's an insult to me, how come America has the first foot in prison as Muslim? America is not a Muslim country. America is a Christian country. Amen. So I believe that the first food should be the Burger King or Madonna. <laughs> well, anybody, I don't want to be bothered by anybody. But to start saying, going around saying this person wasn't a godly person, what what do you think? Uh, Judeo Christianity, they believed in God. Do you believe in God, by the way, Patty? I believe in God. Okay. Yes, but okay, I but. am not a Christian. Okay. I believe that God has better things to do than worry about man's religions. Sure. I believe that God uh, uh, does take care of all of us in a sense, uh, but we have free will and that we all uh, 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 make our choices. We're waiting on a friend, and there's a scripture that says one of my favorite from the Gospel of John. It says, I no longer call you servants. But I call you friend, and that's God speaking to us. And we're having a great conversation with my best friend here, Ralph Romeo. But the Super Bowl, the most important thing I wanted to say about that, we were talking about the commercials, and I was trashing them. But I caught three of the funniest commercials, and I'll tell you why I love them. I caught uh, the one, the only Anthony Hopkins was in a commercial for TurboTax. It was so simple. It had to be good because he could read the phone book and be good. It was, it was great. He's sitting in a chair. It was so simple. It was like a library. And some guy goes, Anthony, are you trying to sell me something? He goes, no, I would never try to sell you anything. And he, <laughs> and it was TurboTax. And he had like a TurboTax shirt on. And then next thing, his shoes said TurboTax. And then he calls his dog in named Turbo. He goes, come in, Turbo. <laughs> it was, uh, it was great. He, look these days? he, looks, he looked great. And, you know, I mean, Anthony Hopkins has got to be way in his 70s. The other guy was, of course, the commercial wasn't as good. We were selling a TV, uh, clear, crystal clear TV, was, of course, Liam Neeson, who was another guy who could read out of the phone book. I mean, just great acting. But the funniest one I saw was Christopher Walken. Now, Christopher Walken, oh he was doing a commercial, and you see this guy walk into a closet, and his wife goes to him, honey, go into the walk-in closet and get some socks. He goes into this big walk-in closet, and he turns around, and he goes, Christopher Walken, what are you doing in my walk-in closet? And you see Christopher Walken sitting there. Christopher Walken goes, first of all, if you're going to choose a sock, you better choose a more colorful one if you want to stand out. I do have the one, the only, the great, Justina Olivia Rushik, who is a great model and actress friend of mine. Um, we have a lot to cover tonight, by the way, but I want to talk to you. I'm sure Ralph will call back in, and he'll, I'm sure he wants to talk to you, too. But I want to talk to you about your uh, your modeling, and uh, tell, tell me a little about yourself. Well, um, I've been modeling for 10 years, and okay. I just started acting. Okay. And I think it's going pretty well. So, um... <laughs> okay, it's funny, because I, I had worked... Uh, I'm trying to get him on the line here. I'm not hitting it. Um... I, it's funny because a friend we had worked with, Bern Davis, who had worked on our film, he's a great guy, a real character actor, he had uh, recommended you, highly recommended you, and you and I had met, and we became good friends, and we shot some scenes together in my upcoming movie, and you were fantastic. And uh, for a lot of you people out there, uh, join us right now if you want to call in 212-219-9695. You're listening to the Ralph Romeo radio program, Christian Varley, hosting right now, and we are talking to Justina Rushik, if I say that right. So, uh, by the way, you are, if, if I may be so bold to ask you, how old are you? May, have, may, may, may ask the unkept question that I'm not allowed to ask. I, she, God, you don't have to answer it. Or a ballpark figure. That's a question that will not be answered. <laughs> okay, good, good. I, I, but she looks everything of a beautiful, perfect 21. But Justina looks a lot like Uma Thurman, and she's been compared to Uma Thurman and to uh, Daryl Hannah. And 
uh, one of the characters she's playing in our film, by the way, she plays very much sort of a Daryl Hannah type from Blade Runner, and she did a fantastic job, by the way. But how long have you been modeling for since? Um, uh, ten years. You've been doing it for ten years, yeah. and you do you do primarily a lot of runway modeling? Is that what it is? A lot of runway catalog prints. Okay, cool. Yeah. And uh, another thing, too, I was going to ask, too, I had heard you say, to mention, too, something about you being in uh, France. You had gone to France. Was that for Victoria's Secret or something? Or what yeah. was that about? Tell us a little about uh, that. I've been in Paris, and I did just shot a commercial with the motorcycle brand. Okay. It went really well. Okay. And how long ago was that, by the way? Uh, that was about three months ago. Okay, and, and and by the way, and and uh, you know we know so many things going on, obviously in the world and in France. Uh, sadly, you know the, the events that me and Ralph were talking about, uh, some tragic stuff going on over there, which is really sad because France seemed to be kind of a a place that was protected over the years, and now in the last year there seems to be a couple of incidents that have taken place, yeah. sadly, over there. So, um, you know that's really sad to see. Yeah, but, when I was there, I made a lot of friends, and I was just really worried about mm -hmm. all of them. And how are, how are they doing, by the way? Are you, are oh, they're you, all good. Oh, thank God. Okay. Yeah.